Okay, and we're heading off on the trail. So this is Sassy. She's not sure about going by this horse. The girl. Weird. Good girl. I'm sorry. Good girl. Good job. Now just a little protest. She's doing fine. She's just looking around a little bit. She's fine leaving the barn alone. Now this is the mud part. Good girl. She just sunk a little bit. Good job. Very money. And the scarecrow thing right here. Good girl. It's all right. Good job. Good job. And there's people in here. Good girl. Come on. You're okay. Hi. You're okay. Nothing bad. She's just being cautious. I'm looking for it to be a little bit flatter, and then we'll see if she'll can it with this sound. She's not cantering yet. Well, maybe you don't know how to can it. <laughs> She was kind of fox trotting as we were going because that was not bouncy. Well, we'll find another spot. So she's going up the steps just fine. She does move out, doesn't she? So we're going to slow her down. This is the narrow part. Careful, sassy. Good job. Go on the trail. Go this way. There we go. Uh, so she did great going up the hill, going up those kind of like steps and stuff, and even through the narrow footing. So, so far, she's a good trail horse. She is very willing to go out by herself. She doesn't feel scared or anything or spooky. Good girl. And I tried that one canter up that hill, but you know, if they never cantered her and I just started the canter in the arena yesterday, then she wouldn't know. Okay, now I'm going downhill over the roots. She's very sure footed. But most of the ones on the trotty side are. You did take a little bit of a harder way down that sass. I can hear her. She's like, shut up, get me. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, Mare's is talking. I hear them all in my head. So she's good through the sand. Remember, if you have trotty horses and then you're going through the sand, it's most likely it can make them to trot if you think faster. So, just usually got to keep their head up a little bit. Okay, so this goes uphill again. Can you do it up this hill fast? Nope. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we still have more hills. So, we have another hill, but I don't want to 
runner ball of them. No, so she just box chops up them, which is fine. It's you know a stable gait, and uh, she's like it's easier on me. But she has not gone out of gate at all. She has, you know, she doesn't trot her pace under saddle. She just fox chops or does her running walk. Okay, so we're gonna turn around here because we're doing construction up there, just like you heard me. What a nice turn on the forehand, Sassy. She's like, I know my stuff now. Okay, but she didn't speed up a lot, turned around, didn't have a fit or anything, so that's all good. We just came from there, you know. She's like, it looks different this direction. Uh, I guess I might as well talk to you guys some. Um, Let's talk about the horse's vision. So they see different than we see. Their eyes are on the side of their head, ours are in the front. So, oh, it's windy. And it's, it's windy. They see all these things moving. So their eyes are attracted to motion. They pick those things up. And that's why the horses get spooky. So if they see motion through a bush, or coming up behind them or in front of them because they're a prey animal that catches their attention pretty quick and then you know some of them have a higher flight mode so some of them they can't tell what it is so their brain just says run run figure out what it is later after we say and some horses don't have that big of a flight and so and some are more curious so they want to see what it is when we see something far away we can hold our head still and we can focus on it but the horses can't they have to move their head up and down and that's how they focus because that is much quicker to pick their head up or down than have their eyes adjust so that's what nature has done for them is it uh, allows them just to move their head and they can focus so you know when they're getting scared they're trying to put their head up and down it's because they're trying to focus on the object the hard part is with your horse is it is your horse a spooky horse or not a spooky horse because that helps you figure out should I let them look or not let them look because the spooky ones usually get spookier it's better to give them a job where the non-spooky ones can usually look and once they see what it is they're fine okay so what else about their eyes sassy's doing fine um, again, our eyes aren't, uh, don't focus on motion as much as theirs do. So when it's windy out like this and everything's moving, they can be more jumpy because then they can't distinguish between something in the bush or the wind is moving it. And so they can get really on edge. And then also they can't hear as well because of the wind noise. And then the other thing that happens on the windy days is the smells. So say there was a lion up here and it left a scent or it was over there. The smells travel farther. So they don't know is that mountain lion here or is he over there or where is he? So all those things make the horse much jumpier. Now the other thing with their eyes that's different from us is they don't see depth the same way. That's why when there's puddles, they always think it's a death hole because they really can't tell if it's a hole or it's got water in it until they smell it or paw at it. So that's why they usually don't want to cross those things because if you're walking down the street and there's a hole, wouldn't you walk around it? You wouldn't want to walk in it. So that's what the horses do is they want to walk around those puddles. But when you're riding on trail and there's a small hole, they don't always see those, so sometimes they do step in those because they don't see it the same as we are. So when we're up here, and we're higher than them, you, you can see different things that they can see. So you want to help them. You see there's a hole, help them. If there's a puddle, you know, give them some time and help them to get through it and teach them it's okay. Because again, it looks different to them than it does to us. And all these things that we're like, why are you afraid of this? Why are you so scared? It's nothing. To them, it doesn't look like nothing, okay? It looks scary, and maybe it has a smell to it or something else. And that's why they, 
some of them get so jumpy and some of them their um, senses are higher than others like some horses can hear farther than other horses and some can smell better i saw that sassy than others she grabbed at the grass <laughs> there at the tree so all those things come into play when you have a spooky horse and then with their vision i tell people when they have a really spooky horse have its eyes checked because some of them have cataracts or they have uveitis and they have other things that are affecting their vision. And, you know, if they have a cataract, it's blocking part of their vision. So, you know, they don't see anything and all of a sudden something pops out, even though you think they saw it the whole time, you know. But it's like when you're watching a scary movie and everything's fine in this scary movie. And then all of a sudden this horrible creature thing jumps out and it, they, they flash it because when they flash it it's even scarier because when you see it for a long period of time you can make it out so it's the same thing with the horse when it just flashes you know it's a bike flying by through the woods they don't know what it is they think it's a mountain lion going through the woods because it's going quick and they don't want to take the time to figure it out if they have a high flight response they want to just get out of there so Lots of these things when the horses have issues, if you think of how they see, how they hear and smell, you'll start to realize why they're doing those things and then try to help them through it. But remember, if you have a really spooky horse, one of the first things to do is check their vision because then at least you have an idea if there is a defect. Uh, this one lady talked to me one time and she said, my horse used to be fine with bikes and now it freaks out with bikes. And I said, how old's your horse? She said, 20. I said, you should get its eyes checked. And she said, what's that going to do? I said, it's going to tell you if it can see those bikes. Because I said, it probably could see the bikes coming before, but now its vision has changed and it probably is not seeing the bikes. Or if it is seeing the bikes, it can't make out what they are because it's blurry or it's in a, you know, it's blocked. And that's why it's spooking. She didn't listen to me. She never got its eyes checked. <laughs> I was like, there's no sense in beating a horse up, trying to get them over something when they can't see it. Uh, you know, that's just not right. So it's best to know because then you know why they're spooking and you can try to help them or, you know, if it's in one eye and not in the other, if something scary is coming, you can face them so that one eye, the better eye, can see it. And uh, the horses, the other thing with their vision is what we can see like 60 feet away some of them can only see it 20 feet away so when it's 60 feet away and it's moving fast they can't tell what the heck it is and once it gets up to 20 feet they're like oh it's a bike i got it but before that you know they can have a conniption fit because something is charging towards them and they can't make it out what it is so just remember when you see something and you're like oh there's hikers coming you might be able to see them but the horse cannot and you know you're relaxed and not paying attention then the horse spooks and you're like oh idiot I, it's hikers you saw them but they really didn't you saw them but the horse didn't okay last thing on vision uh horses are colorblind and for those of you who don't know what that is that means they can't distinguish between uh, red and green very well and they see shades of colors so they can tell it's a different color with some of the things, but the, you know, like yellow versus uh, blue or something. But the red and the green, they can't really tell the difference so well. Now, why is that important? Because what are you seeing in front of you with this camera? Everything's green. So say a biker was coming and he had a red shirt on, you know what the horse would see? Something moving. But, oh, Sassy, we got to go up here. Um, it'd see something moving, but it wouldn't be able to see that it was a person with a red shirt on because the red looks like green to them. So all they see is motion and something that looks green. And that's how predators try to hide. They try to hide in the bushes and stuff and cover themselves. So that would scare the horse. So you might have a horse that, you know, you're like, sometimes he's fine with bikes and sometimes he's not. Well, start checking out what colors of the bikers he doesn't like because if it's red or it's green he might not be able to see them but when they have yellow or purple or something else on that horse might be able to see it so it's just interesting stuff about their vision that's why i always try to make sure everything's 
right with the horse before I get on its case or get after it because sometimes they're messing with you and sometimes they're not they really can't see anything I'm gonna have to cut that thing down so sassy tolerated me talking she goes down these steps very well and she did great all by herself you saw she never stopped this horse was stopping on the trail with the owner um, when she was with other people so I gotta take her out with some other riders and I gotta trail her out and try to figure out why she was stopping us and she don't like the trailer or she doesn't want to go home but she's going home alone but she does really like the trail so this is a good example the guys in the flowers picking the flowers and he's got a green mask on or something and he's got a red shirt on and he's got a straw hat it's okay sass so what does sassy see she can see that hat but she can't see the rest of him because again it's going to blend in with the green that he's in so she's being fine she's turning her head she's trying to look and then he's got, he's got some noise going on so she can hear that so that's good so i got my hands wide i'm sitting back now she you want to go home right but she can't make out what it is. And even though we saw him coming up, she, she don't remember that. Good girl. So she wants to turn now. See, she's turning this way because she can see something different. Now, see, wasn't that weird? She turned all the way around and you would have thought she's trying to go back on the trail. No, she wasn't. She's trying to see it. She's trying to make out what he is with her eyes by turning her body. Good girl. Good job. Remember, she doesn't see him. She sees like the predator. Did you see the predator move? You didn't. You should see that because it gives you an example of what the horse is seeing. It's just movement. Good girl. So she didn't do anything bad, but a lot of people would have, you know, kicked her, or smacked her, and done stuff. But she actually turned around so she could see it out of a different part of her eye. And maybe that part of her eye she can focus better out of. You know, it gives her a different opportunity. So, we're going through the mud. She's doing good. It's getting very sloppy, sassy. So sassy did a great job. And even when she was scared, she still tried, and uh, she did the mare thing, like, I need to see what this is. I need to know I'm safe before I'm going. And she, she figured it out. She, she's like, it's an invisible man with a hat on. <laughs> okay, I'm going to talk about one more thing with, like, puddles, because I'm coming up on this big puddle that we're going to go through. And remember, steer here where it's slick. Don't with these horses that slide their feet you don't want to go through that part but things like this where it's a puddle and it's mud some horses don't want to go through that stuff because the water's not moving they're like what the water's not moving therefore they can't always tell it's water they just see again a big hole so it's a good reason to have a stick. Stay over there. <laughs> um, you know, when it's a river or a lake or something, the water moves so the horse can say, oh, it, that's water. But when it's not moving, they can't always tell that it's not a hole. Okay, it's too windy to talk. She did great. Okay, I'm going to show you her side pass in case some of you are working on it. So we've been doing it in the arena, and now I'm doing it out here she's not going to want to do it. So we just did it to the right. Now she don't want to go left. She's having a hissy fit. Good girl. So see, she just had that whole hissy fit. And, uh, ah, 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 ah. but they got to be able to do it wherever we ask them. So she's mad. She's like, I'm it all the way home. I did everything right. This is what you're doing to me. I'm like, yeah. Good girl. So see, she gave a little like, I'm gonna rear up. I'm like, I don't give a crap. Go ahead. Good girl. So those are little hissy fits. And you, if you let that intimidate you, 
you know, then they won't do it. But remember that turn on the forehand or disengage their hindquarters. If they try to rear up more when you're doing this stuff, that's what you do. You spin them around. So I'm going to do it again because you might try to uh, rear up. And so you can see over. Good girl. You could do a better one. Yeah, she's backing up. Now she's going the wrong direction, so I'm going to spin her around. Over. Sassy can be sassy. Now that's good enough, because she uh, just is learning this, and so she didn't do it great, but she moved her front over, and then she moved her back over, and she didn't rear up. So, thank you, Sassy. <laughs> right? So now I'll do not, something nice to her. I might go graze her or something. Um, but remember, don't give up. Teach them to do the stuff wherever, because I'm going to need to side pass on trail, right? Side pass in the rain is great, but the reason I'm teaching is because I'm going to need to do it on trail. Okay.